people welcome once again to HN Clothings welcome to another wonderful video so guys I figured that we've done a lot of pattern drafting in this video like on this channel I mean we've done so many drafting basic bodies this and that but here I want to I want to reach out to my subscribers that use freehand or that are just in the beginning phase of their sewing journey okay so we're going to be touching up on simple tips and tricks that you as a beginner so somebody that's just starting in sewing can do can use to level up your sewing game you hear the keyword there leveling up your sewing game okay so what do i mean by that first of all we're going to look at how to fix a gaping neckline so when you join your front shoulder and your back shoulder and then you have a gape when you have an opening happening there in the front what do you do we're going to touch up on that we're also going to touch up on when you have a tight fitting armhole so your client can't raise up his or her hand and it's like why against the world what do you do when you're also working with fabric some kind of very delicate very structured kind of fabric and then you're having some kind of puckering you're having bulges wavy back back lines going on along the zipper area what do you do even when you're not working with such kind of fabrics you're working with your normal cotton fabric that does not stretch and then you also have gaping zipper at the back what do you do we have such numerous of them so we'll be touching at about five five unique cases like that i'm going to be showing you the problem and show you how to fix the problem that's very important how to fix the problem so if you're interested in this kind of video please do keep on watching remember it's targeted for those that are just beginning their sewing journey and freehand method yes it's also for those that are doing more of diy okay so if you want to see this you want to learn you want to see the right way to construct your sleeve do your pattern armhole gaping on the princess armhole side what do you do we're going to touch up on all of that in this video so we're coming over to our sewing table here a cutting table i mean doing the cutting explaining and if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please click on the subscribe button turn your turn on your post notification so that you always be alerted whenever i upload a new video do not also forget to give me a huge thumbs up so that these videos will be pushed out by youtube okay do not be stingy with your likes do not be stingy with your likes, okay? Drop a comment for me in the comment section below. Also, wait, 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 wait. If you have some challenges you want us to talk about, please leave them in the comment section as well so that I can make a part two of this video, okay? And yeah, let's dive right into today's video. First things first, I have some fabrics. I've prepared the pattern, the fabrics, I mean. <laughs> I'm used to patterns. We're not using any pattern whatsoever in this video. I just have pieces of fabric that I'm going to use for explanation purposes and then to show you how to solve them. First things first, we're going to be starting with the first one, which is how to handle gaping necklines. What do I mean by gaping necklines? When you have necklines where do not relax on your body or on your client's body, we want to see how to solve that. First of all, make sure that, okay, so for in this case, I have my front folded into two and my back folded into two. I want to show you the proper way to cut it, okay? So that's if you're using freehand, right? I'm going to place front and back together. Make sure you have marked out your neckline you marked out the shoulder and the armhole, okay? Those are very important things that you need to have done. So I'm just going to cut the front neckline. Remember that in freehand, or not even in freehand, usually your front neckline goes lower than the back. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm cutting the 
front lower and then I'm cutting the back so I want to show you how exactly to solve this right so you just cut them separately okay so let me just shake the side great so this is what we have the front and the back now for you to avoid gaping in the neckline hmm? let's imagine that the back is on fold the front is on fold okay for you to avoid gaping on the neckline whenever you have your back i've opened up the back this way right the front as well needs to that the shoulder needs to match up make sure that when you're sewing place it out like laid flat place it on each other and make sure that you have the same thing like let it relax let it relax it is very wrong okay now let me give you another case scenario now in this case all you just need to do is just sew up the shoulders and then this neckline will always relax on your body now in the case scenario where you have something like this i want to show you another possible case scenario let's say you have gone to let's say you have gone to cut this front neckline wider than the back right let's say you have cut the front neckline that's the width you see it's wider than the back width do not ever ever take your front shoulder and your back shoulder this way and sew it up this way now if you look closely you will see that there is some there's a part that is not relaxing on this front by the time you join this to this you can see this part gaping here that is what is going to cause it to gape so the first thing you need to do is make sure that this and this like these two shoulders is flat on each other even if you have a zipper on the back right make sure that the back shoulder that width there matches up and when you lay flat on each other the front is flat on the back the back is flat underneath the front you do not want one to be smaller in terms of shoulder width and then you're just oh i'll just go on to join the shoulder from the beginning that will cause gaping okay so i'm going to sew this we're going to put it on the mannequin see the effect is going to have remember we are practicalizing and then i'll come back and show you how to fix it so first things first i'll just assume that i'm a beginner sewer and then i'm just sewing these two shoulder seams just from here to there and from here to there let's go over to the machine to sew this quickly all right so here's our makeshift bodies that we just did so i actually want to show you um that part i spoke about now can you see what i'm talking about when you use the shoulder just as a yardstick to match up without actually considering if the front and back is laying flat on each other you can see this this will this is the reason why your body does not relax on yourself or on your client after you sew when they wear it and then there's this gap in your front the main reason is because the shoulder of the front and the back like the bodies is not lying flat on each other so let me quickly show you the fix to it so we're going to <laughs> pull this off come over here real quick and then i'm losing this to show you what to do all right so we've loosened up the shoulders okay so if you're looking closely you can see that the front on the back actually there's a space here you can see about half of an inch that we neglected initially which caused the fold up or the gaping all you just need to do is take your scissors and make sure you trim this out just trim you don't even want to mess up with the um, depth of the neckline you just want to trim off that part 
at the two sides of the two edges exactly so this is what you actually need to do which i've done now all i'll just do is go and sew back these two sides and then we'll have the perfect fit so let's quickly do that beautiful so you can see that the front the key thing the front and the back should be flat on each other make sure you double check then we can then press check again <laughs> triple check this time on our mannequin so let's see amazing so what can you see can you tell me the difference can you see that this is now flat on the bodies and that thing we were having that was just coming out we can't see it no more okay so this is a nice crop top wow i will repurpose this to my crop top <laughs> all right guys so let's move on to the next sewing mistake and the tip and trick to use to correct that one which is the armhole type thing let's go over to the cutting table now this tip actually specifically targets the armhole how do i mean most times beginner sewers just um sew up and then they have a very tight fitting armhole which will not be able to fit either them or their client by the time they are done with their project so what you need to do after joining the shoulders like we have done joining the side seams like we have done before even inserting your sleeve you need to make sure that this armhole that you have here corresponds to the armhole the standard armhole of a um, lady with different bust sizes because the bust size actually dictates how big or how small or how medium average the armhole should be how do i mean for average sizes of a woman's bust size the armhole should be between eight inches eight and a half inches nine inches larger sizes or larger sizes will be like 10 inches so usually an average size armhole is between eight and eight and a half inches all you need to do is take your measuring tape from here and measure to see that you have just that now if you're coming closer from this tip here from this beginning here up onto where this is this is six and a half inches by the time you wear this right this will be perfect if you're doing a sleeveless body something you're not attaching a sleeve to but if you're going to be attaching a sleeve to this armhole you have an issue because this is too tight and will not sit right on the body first things first you need to drop this armhole okay by dropping it i mean you need to increase the size of the armhole put your measuring tape back from this beginning and where you want it to stop which is just about eight inches there you want to use your chalk and mark that exact point which is here for me and then you just want to curve you just want to curve it okay you don't want to eat into this bodice you just want to curve it okay so this is what we are doing i will just cut this out great so this is what we're having now something very very vital you want to do again is make sure that this front bodice right that's the front armhole is actually just a teeny weeny bit um inside than the back armhole you can just use about quarter of an inch right from here just to shape it inwards what does this mean but remember that by the time you're shaping it, you don't want to cut into the bust area. Just do a little, a little trimming. Why is this important? Now, if you take a look at your body, right, in your front, you have the bust. The bust lifts the front bodies away, right? It moves it away from where it is standing and it's giving you... A more a curve that goes inwards than the back the back just has the shoulder blade 
which is not as pronounced as the bust in front so that's why you need to make sure that you move this just a little inwards by a quarter of an inch now this will perfectly fit any armhole you are going to like any sleeve you are going to be fixing in this armhole what you have done here you just want to replicate it for the other side so all i'll do is fold this pattern into two like this place this on this exactly the same way and then i just want to give this a trim let's try this on our um mannequin and then we can see if there's really a difference between both okay so when you look at this you can't well because there's no sleeve there we really can't tell yet but if you look at this closely you can see that this one comes in more right and by the time we sew your sleeve on this it may not be as flattering as sewing your sleeve on this one that has been worked on remember that these bodies do not have any darts that's why you're seeing this if there were darts on this body so we are taking care of um this part that is going on okay or if it was a darkless body then you'll have taken care of that anyway so this is what we're having now this is what we're having now by the time we sew in the sleeve into this place it sits well right it sits well this one comes in more so you see that you'll be having extra excess fabric here compared to this one that is already sitting beautifully and this is just like the sewing allowance of the sleeve okay i hope you can tell the difference this one is more excessive compared to this one right so please learn and know the difference make sure you effect the change as from today in the comment section below let me know if you've tried this in the past and if it has always worked for you remember to leave more tips that you use in the comments as well okay so let's move on to the next tip and trick for leveling up our sewing game the next one is how to actually cut a sleeve right so i'm going to be doing a short sleeve i have this beautiful fabric and then we're going to be using this to plan the sleeve okay usually you will need the width of your round sleeve so this is about seven and a half inches which is just perfect for my round sleeve and then you're just going to be doing your um the sleeve cap area and then connecting it into the sleeve area <laughs> No way, I'm good with free hand though. Hmm. I'm good with free hand. It's just that time and time again, pattern has bought me. Like pattern has bought me time and time again. I use free hand when I need to, but I just love pattern more. Yeah, that's just it. So this is our sleeve now. I have I cut two sleeves, one for the left one for the left one for the right if you want me to be doing some freehand projects on this channel that's some diy project where we do not need patterns leave it in the comment section below as well i sure will look i'll dig up some projects we can do using freehand and then we can work on it together so um this is the wrong side yeah this is the wrong side and this will also be the wrong side here so I'll just put it wrong side for each of them now if you look at this closely you want to always make sure that this front armhole also goes in you just want to trim just about a quarter inch away okay up onto that sleeve cap up onto here so that you'll be having this kind of effect i hope you can see what i'm saying uh this part should just go in more about a quarter to half an inch i'll do the same here you just want to go in a little more on the front about a quarter to half an inch depending on how big or busty small or 
average sized bust your client is or yourself is so this is exactly what you want to have the front lower than the back and then we can go on to show the side seams and then fit this into the sleeve thankfully we still have this body so we're going to be inserting the sleeve into this bodies and then see how to actually get it right so let's go over to the sewing machine this time together okay so here is the sleeve inserted and then let's even see if there's a difference between um both armholes that we did originally okay so you can see this is looking more realistic you know this is not properly ironed once it's ironed you see that it sits beautifully i just don't want to start pulling off my clothes and wearing it for you exactly now you can see this one that it is way beyond try i wish i can wear this thing for you you can see that it is way beyond okay you can see that this is way beyond the armhole right it's out of its jurisdiction see what is this what is this but look at this it's within its jurisdiction and when it's properly ironed you see it's sitting pretty Oh, this is a nice crop top, guys. I think I'll be wearing this. What do you think? All right, so let's move on to <laughs> the next. I think I may not have to remove this yet. Let's move on to the next tip and trick. This one has to deal with princess, that armhole princess that when you're using freehand method to cut your armhole princess that. So I already have my middle, that is the center front and then the side pieces i've gone ahead to even draw the outline of the dart so i will just cut it okay okay so now that we have this as a princess dart that we're going to be sewing into this center front space something that is very key that we actually neglect to do is actually reducing this part up here okay so from this um maybe from that your boss point area where your boss point is that chest line from that this let's assume this is the chest line and this is the boss line you would have taken the measurement on your bodies from this chest line you want to just reduce it by like half an inch or quarter of an inch you want to remove some extra don't remove too much just a little to actually take care of that bulge or pork cream we see whenever we so princess that and then it doesn't relax well on the body so once you have taken that one off you see that you have a more relaxed a more flat princess that so let me show this quickly and then we will see how it is so it's just joining this part to this um side and the other one to the second side so let me quickly sew that up all right so here is what i just explained okay um the boss area will sit pretty with your princess that that's after you've removed that little piece just a little piece please don't overdo once you overdo there's always a, a consequence <laughs> don't overdo it so this is what the fourth um tip that you can use to level up your sewing game let's move on to the zippers at the back all right so i have this piece that i'm going to be using for my back piece now something i quickly want to sound a note of warning on is do not let your back whenever you're sewing you're going to insert zippers into your back do not let your back be straight this way no one ever has a straight back so i'm going to be removing this cut here so that we can see what i mean this mannequin does not have a straight back you as an individual does not have a straight back no one ever has a straight back 
So you see it slants inward. You want to take your measuring tape and measure from this neck of the neck to where it slants inwards. That the most prominent point, the most significant point. Once you have that from here to here, usually it's between 13 to 16 inches depending on how tall or how short the person is. So that's like a standard 13 to 16 inches. So once you have that measurement, you are going to mark that exact measurement on your fabric, okay? So you would have taken your measuring tape. Don't start from the new neckline you cut. Start from that top there. Put it there. Measure to where that 13 or 14 or 15 or 16 inches that you have taken is, which is here. And you just want to take out about three quarter of an inch so you can take out about three quarter or one inch so once i measure that one inch here from this very tip here so it slants it slants because you are taking it from the tip on top there to that one inch below there right and then you slant it back out if you are doing a half length or something so not totally slant though but take it back out right and then you can trim do not ever make the mistake of letting your body slide straight that is a big recipe for bulge at the back so once i do this i've taken good care of that back bulge next i'll just use my zipper that i'm going to be inserting pin it there so i'll open it up right like so you can see you can even see that shaping it's it's everywhere look at your mannequin look at your body analyze figures you see that that back shaping is important so you just place your zipper however you insert your zipper put it and then sew it and by the time you zip it up it snatches and eliminates whatever bulge you have at the back of your outfit so that one is taken care of this is how you eliminate bulge on a fabric that does not stretch like cotton ankara ankara is cotton leaning fabrics that don't stretch this is the best way to insert a zipper to eliminate bulge now finally let's look at how to insert zippers on fabrics that stretches fabrics that are not just like cotton um for example sequin is stretchy um, velvet, stretchy, all those stretchy fabrics or fabrics that are kind of difficult to work with. First of all, the same rule applies to this one, what I just spoke about. You want to remove about one inch because this is even a stretchy fabric. So you may, you are even allowed to remove more than one inch. So it slants because this one is not a full bodice. It's just to the half length. So once I cut this away, amazing so once i cut this away it actually already takes care of whatever bulge that will be happening there at the back now for you to solidify what you need to do you can't just take your zipper first of all let me even talk about the kind of zipper you need you need to use an invisible zipper right an invisible zipper is best to use for fabric that stretches fabric that is flimsy invisible zippers are best to use if you go on to use this kind of zipper like an open and close zipper that has this kind of um um con conspicuous um zip closure we use this kind of zipper that you can see the teeth very big large and all of that if you use this kind of zipper you will be having a very wavy bulky um back right it's going to be wavy and bulky you can try it out and let me know if your experience is different or not so once you have this all you just need to do is first of all go and use you can use your needle and thread and then sew a basting stitch there to hold the two pieces together or go to your sewing machine and sew using a basting stitch to hold the two pieces together so let me do that quickly great so the purpose of that basting stitch is to make this back this center back always straight so it's like making it eliminating whatever waviness that will happen if you were just to introduce the zipper directly so this is like the um this is like the controller yes 
to um, reduce the waviness or to stop the waviness. Now, another tip if you're going to be using this trick to insert your zipper is make sure that this zipper length that's make sure that um the zipper allowance you're going to be using is more than the zipper allowance you left so for instance if you left one inch zipper allowance do like one and a half so by the time you're done sewing the zipper teeth because you now need to sew the tip zipper teeth to this cloth right and then losing this basting stitch to reveal the zipper okay so by the time i put this i'll now use my um pins let me get my pins i'll just use my pins and then just pin this pin right side of the zipper to the right side of the fabric you don't want to pull too much you want to let it relax and then pin relax and then pin don't pull too much so that you are not having um a fabric that will now start bunching up later on so relax and pin do the same thing for the second part relax it that's let it ease out and then you pin let it ease out then you pin so once we do that ease out and pin is out and pin so once we do that we can then go on to sew this close to the teeth you can use a zipper foot sew it close to the teeth on both sides and then by the time you unravel this basting stitch you can have your zipper i hope you understand what i mean so let me just quickly do that and then i'll come on to show you i'll take this sew this here I'll take this, sew this here, then I'll come on to unravel and show you what I mean. So here has been sewn. You can see I will just unravel that stitch with my seam ripper. All right, so this is the result of um, putting that basting stitch to actually be like a guide and then sewing this up i did not sew it so close but you can see that it stays flat there is no waviness even after zipping up okay i hope you get the gist so i hope this simple tips and tricks that we have talked about in this video did help a whole lot like i said please leave in the comment section below any other challenge you're having as a beginner sewer and you want me to help you provide solutions to such that challenges i'll be reading through your comment section and yeah that's about it for this video thank you so much to those supporting the channel through channel membership we are super grateful okay uh i said we i am grateful hey chunk clothing is grateful and let's see what else what else do not forget to subscribe if you're yet to give me a huge thumbs up if you haven't done so already at this point leave your comments in the comment section below i always love to read your comments till we see in the next tutorial stay safe god bless you all bye